Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another Zerk vs Zerk in StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Now today, I'm gonna try my very best to play the safest all-round build that I can go ahead and execute in this matchup. I already like my opponent. <laughs> He's in a great mood, I like this. So, here's a couple things that you need to know about Zerk vs Zerks. First off, in particular on this map, it is really, really common for people to go ahead and cheese you out. Just because of the gold base, a lot of people get greedy, and for that very reason, like a 13-12 opener is really aggressive. So what I'm focusing on right here is 14 gas into a 14 spawning pool, and I'm gonna actually get another worker out right now as well, just to make sure that I, you know, actually get 15 out of 14. At this point, I'm gonna follow it up finally with an overlord as well and eventually we're gonna be getting a couple of zerklings and a queen now i get a lot of questions about this because zerk for the zerk can definitely feel a little bit tricky but this in general in my experience is the most safe all-round build order then I also make sure that I position the spawning pool so that one queen can basically stand in that little gap. So just in case if my opponent is going to be cheesing, I'm going to be able to defend that with relative ease. Now very shortly, we are going to be able to finish up the spawning pool, at which point I want to start up the queen immediately. I'm going to pull one drone out of gas as well, and very shortly I'm going to be starting up the zerking speed. Now at this point, I'm going to be able to start making whatever I please, but first off, on most occasions, I'm going to go ahead and make an Overlord. So, as you can see, I'm not rushing out any Zerklings, I'm not rushing out any kind of early game defense. I'm just making sure that I'm going to be safe, just in case my opponent goes for a 13-12 and decides to cheese me out. In my experience so far, at least playing the letter, this is the safest all-round build, or like, you know, the safest all-round build. So, that's a 14 gas into a, a 14 spawning pool. Drone up to 18, get the Zerkling speed started, get the Queen started as well, and make sure that you actually pay attention to the minimap to see whether or not your opponent is going to go for any kind of aggression. Now, looks like in this particular case, there isn't all too much aggression coming in at all, so I'm going to go ahead and make an expansion now that I know it's safe to go. Now, obviously, if my opponent did decide to go for hatchery first himself, there's a very big chance that, you know, he would have lost if I would have opened up more aggressively, but there's also a very big chance that... Um, you know, he's gonna be ahead in economy in this particular case. So there's always a trade-off in ZvZ. Like, if you decide to open up with a safe build, you're gonna be behind against strategies like the one my opponent is going for in this particular case, and he's gonna have a lot of extra units. A lot of extra units. Now, this does allow us to transition to, into the middle part of the game uh, relatively easily, though. Obviously, we gotta keep in mind here that my opponent is likely gonna assume he's ahead, economically speaking, and he may be a little bit scared to drone up more aggressively. So, he actually has a ton of workers right now. I'm gonna go ahead and check out what is going on exactly in that main base. Looks look like he transferred most of them, so he's also actually adding on the Roach Warren as well as an upgrade in that um, in that um, Evo chamber. So something cheeky is going on from my opponent. What I'm gonna do is add on my own Roach Warren here as well. Start up another queen and walk this this gal to the natural. So we need to make sure we get some extra economy going. Looks like I'm a little early though with the uh, with the drone transfer. Probably could have waited just a little bit longer. But here's how we're gonna try and defend the aggression that he's going for. So we know he's gonna go for some sort of all-in. We know that that is going to be the case. A couple things we can do. First off, we can just simply focus on making a lot of roaches, which is likely going to be the case. But primarily speaking, I want to try my very best to get the economy lead. I want to make sure that I get as many workers as I possibly can before really adding on anything else. So what I'm going to do is make a couple more workers, and I'm trying to squeeze out as many as possible. Now, I know right now I'm definitely going to have more workers than him, just because he already seemed to be focusing on a lot more. I also do need to make sure I clean up these links if I can at all avoid it. He's gonna try and check out right now what exactly is going on. I'm still squeezing out workers, by the way. Still making more workers. Still making sure that I know exactly what is going on. So I'm just trying to buy time here primarily. I do have some more Zerklings incoming, so as long as I manage to kill that, we're gonna be A-okay. All right, so here we go. I got my bases done. I got my spine crawlers finishing up. Gotta make sure that I snipe these links if I can at all. I don't think he actually saw any of my units. So at this point, I am feeling pretty solid about this situation. Making a couple overlords here just in case I need to make roaches, but I think I'm in a good spot. In fact, I think I'm just gonna simply add on my roaches here no matter what, just because, yeah, my opponent is definitely gonna go for some sort of aggression. Now, I am a little bit late because he did snipe one of my overlords, which just, you know, messed me up a little, but we should still be more than okay. We should still be more than okay. Adding on a lot of things. Third queen is just finishing up as well. Just because we can, I'm gonna be putting all of those in the natural. And I'm gonna go ahead and make as many roaches as I possibly can. So at this point, I know I will have more than enough to defend this for sure. There's really no way I don't. 
He definitely does have an option of running up the ramp here, but it looks like we just simply have more things. Gotta go ahead and follow this up with two spine crawlers, or with uh, with uh, two Evo Chambers rather. Still making more home defenses, but this should be a relatively clean game from here. Obviously, don't really want to fight anyone, you know, unnecessarily. Gonna hit the transfuse, make sure we get as much defense done here as possible. And we are gonna clean up the aggression. Alright, so Lair is coming in. I'm gonna add on two more gases here, as well as the third base. And we're simply gonna try our very best to deal some damage. Now, it's important to note, he does have plus one attack on these units. Which does make them relatively powerful. But we can go ahead and just simply, you know, get the macro advantage. Trying to micro back for just a little bit. <laughs> nice scout and well read. Thank you. <laughs> what a nice dude. Alright, so first off, before we actually jump into the analysis of this game, because there's a couple points that I would like to clarify. I tried whispering my opponent in this particular case, because, you know, he's a Zerg player, he may have heard of my videos before. Um, it seems like a lot of the Zerg players on the ladder have, and I'm actually playing on my barcode right here, so you wouldn't be able to recognize me. Um, but, Ouija, huge shout out to you for being so extremely mannered and, like, being nice about it. I thought you were gonna BM for a second because I've been playing so much ladder games that I've been like brainwashed to assume that as someone talks to me, you know, they're gonna say something rude whenever they're losing, which you were extremely mad about it. Really cool guy. But anyways, so in this particular case, what exactly happened? So first off, a couple points I want to touch upon. First off, once again, the build order. Then I want to be going over the scout timing that is really important to do as well. And then on how to defend these corner of aggressions. And then also how to set up a transition. Because one of like all of these stages are a little bit uh, tricky to, uh, to get across when you're actually in the middle of the game. So first off, first things first, we're going to be talking about the build order. So the build order. I tried pointing it out to the best of my abilities in-game, but we open up with a 14 spawning or 14 gas geyser into a 14 spawning pool. Then we drone up until 18 while doing an extracted trick right there. Drone up until 18 here. Obviously, we do get an overlord at 15. Um, then once the spawning pool finishes, we start up a queen, pull one of the drones out of gas at 100, which is right about right now, and we start up the zerking speed. Now, as you can see, at this point, no matter what, if my opponent would have gone for 13-12 openers, which are really popular, I would have been ahead, economically speaking. Now, the problem, obviously, is that when your op 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 opponent opens up with a hatchery first, you're going to be behind, in particular on maps that have a gold base. Now... Most other maps, though, I would say this is by far the safest all-round build and the safest strategy to be going for in Zerg vs. Zerg right now. Obviously, you gotta follow it up with some Zerg and Baneling Micro, so that is one of the things that you can, you know, you know, rely on for a bit. But because of this opener, you do have enough resources to add on the natural relatively quickly. So I do start up another Overlord here as well, just to make sure that I do not get supply blocked. That one was at 20 supply. Sometimes you can actually drone up a little bit more greedily. And the one thing you're looking for right now is the mini-map. So this Overlord right here will spot every single time well, at least it should spawn every single time on every map, and I actually should have sent it a little bit more north, because he could have, like, you know, he could have sort of, like, snuck past here. Uh, but he will spot whether or not Zerkings are coming in. And if you spot that Zerkings are, con are gonna come in, you obviously just queue up another queen, you can put down a spine crawler in this little alleyway here to block out Zerklings there, you can add on... Um, you know, an expansion after all of that aggression has passed, but for the most part, you're just simply gonna superiorize that, or like, you know, stabilize that economy that you got. And the idea behind the building placement is that if you, like, basically plug all those, like, gaps in between the buildings, the bailings are gonna take much longer to waddle around, and most of the time you're gonna be fine. So, let's say my opponent would have gone for a 13-12 build, he would have had roughly 14 or so workers, maybe, um, you know, 13-12, it kind of depends on exactly what he's going for, um, and we are gonna go up until 17. So, we're in a great spot, usually when you play against this, you can defend against 13-12 builds and be very far ahead. Like, four workers doesn't sound like a huge advantage, but it adds up really quickly. But either way, in this particular case, that is not going to be true. Um, so, what are we looking for here? What, what exactly is it that we need to do? So, there's a couple moments in Zerk vs. Zerk where you can go ahead and scout. Zerk vs. Zerk is a tricky matchup in the fact that once Zerkings come out and Zerkings speed is done, those are going to be the fastest units in the game, right? And most of the time, if you are the one with the slow Zerklings and your opponent has Zerkling speed, you're not going to be able to get any Zerklings out across the map. However, the one advantage that I do know that I will have right after scouting that my opponent indeed did go for that quicker expansion, um, and we'll see that right about right now. I could have flown out this overload a little bit more. Uh, but right now, I know for a fact 
that because he spent that early game economy to get the expansion out, I'm gonna be ahead here in econ or in in you know my tech. While he's definitely gonna have the eco advantage, I mean it's it's not even that big. It's not even that big, but the golden patches add up. Um, while I definitely do know that he has the economy advantage, there is no way that he's also gonna be finishing up zerklings as early as I did, right? Because I I went for like some of the zer fastest zerking speed in the game. So. At this point, I am just simply sitting back. I know it's gonna take two pokes of a spine crawler to kill one Zerklings, so as long as I, you know, as long as I actually wait until link speed is done, I'm more than likely gonna be able to make a huge loop around in his base. So there's two scout timings usually in Zerk vs Zerk early game that you can try and do. First off, the very first one uh, is going to be the Overlord. You gotta make sure you have your overlords spread between the bases, usually between the path of his base to your base. So in this particular case, I got one right here. I got, you know, I actually should be having this out a little bit further. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, like, it's gonna fly out a little further. And usually this third dude is got to spot, basically, units that come in. So those are the very first ones. Now, right when Zerking Speed finishes up, in particular when you went for 14-14, like I showcased in this video, and you know that your opponent went for an expansion or anything like that, you know Link Speed is gonna finish up before him, you're gonna be able to make a huge loop around in their base right when Link Speed finishes up. Not any later, because obviously then there's a chance he also finishes up Link Speed, but before that, you have a huge chance at scouting as well. So right now, I'm just simply waiting. I shouldn't really be fighting this. Should not really be fighting this. And in this case, I got actually four Zerklings. And as soon as Zerkling speed finishes up, I want to try and do a bit of a loop around. So you see, I'm trying to wait for that. Now, obviously, over time, you'll get that timing down in your head more. But whenever Link Speed finishes up, try and make a loop around in their base. Try and figure out exactly what they're going for. Now, what are we looking for? First off, we're looking for um, units or buildings such as the Evo Chamber. Evo Chambers, early on in the game, like basically guarantee aggression. If they go for an Evo Chamber early on into the game, more often than not actually, in particular on this map, they go for plus one Zerkling attack and basically try and overwhelm you with massive amounts of Zerklings. But there's also other options available. Sometimes you see a really quick lair, sometimes you see a Roach Warren go down, and sometimes you see an Evo Chamber and a Roach Warren. Now right now, in this case, I spot a lack of minerals uh, or drones on minerals right here, and I spot the Roach Warren um, that I do click on just to figure out exactly that that is going to be the Roach Warren, and I figure out that it's an evolution chamber. Now, what exactly does my opponent have at this point in time that he could try and, um, you know, get an advantage with? Well, basically, he knows that he got the economy advantage just because of the timing of my speed and the timing of my circlings, so he knows that I did go for a later expansion, and he also knows that he's going to be having more workers out more than likely at this point in the game. And because of the golden patches, obviously his income is going to be slightly higher. Now, actually, at this point, it's not even higher, but I want to go over in just in that in just a second. He's more than likely going to be ahead in economy here. Now, he only really has one chance, or like really only has one option. Because he skipped that zerking speed, if he decides to sit back um, and try and macro his way out of that, and for example, try and take a third base, my links are going to almost every single time get that kill on this third base. So, because he knows that if I know as well, that he is going to be uh, weak in that sense, he basically needs to go ahead and do some sort of two-base aggression. Now, if we think about the different kinds of two-base aggression uh, that he can go for, um, he basically can only really be going for a Roach Warren right now, or for Roaches right now, with plus one attack. Now, the reason why he's getting the plus one missile attack in this particular game is because with plus one attack, it takes Roaches only two shots to kill a Zerkling, otherwise it takes three. So, you know, getting the plus one attack is huge. Now, you always want to be thinking about the fact, or about what your opponent could be going for. And just to clarify my point once again, because this is something I get on the live stream a lot. Because my opponent skipped that early Zerking speed, and I can nearly guarantee that, once again, I didn't see the wobbling as well in this in this spawning pool. It can be hard to spot, but because of the Roach Warren early on, and only one Gas Geyser, uh, my opponent more than likely never got that uh, Metabolic Boost upgrade for the Zerklings. Which means that if he is trying to take a third base, he has absolutely nothing to hold on with. I mean, there's no Baning Nest, there's no Zerking speed, there's one you know, queen for every base and one spine crawler. Third bases are not going to be something he can hold on to. So he knows that at this point, um, he like needs to put all his axe in one basket and go from there. Other options that he could be going for are things like a quick lair. Uh, for example, like plus one, plus one attack um, roaches. Uh, so he focuses on like a, a later timing push. But more than likely, if they get this greedy with the Evo Chambers and skip out a couple of workers here, they're going to be simply just sitting back they're simply going to be waiting, and they're simply just going to, you know, cross their arms and do one big push right when plus one attack finishes up. Now, 
Obviously, this is going on in the in like a matter of seconds, right? And the way you can learn these kind of moves is by simply just watching your replay and figuring out when you could have uh, achieved that. So once again, Overlord Scouts, really important out on the map. Zerking Speed Scout, in particular when you know your opponent went for a expansion before anything else. Now, what exactly um, are we gonna do to counter this? Because right now, I am putting my... Um, I'm putting my money on my opponent going for a 2 base all-in. Just because I've scouted out what's going on, and I got a very good, you know, usual understanding of how the early game Zerk vs. Zerk matchup works. At this point, it basically works like Zerk vs. Protoss, right? Where this Protoss is going for a 2 base all-in, and the Zerk player is sitting on like 3 bases or whatever. Now, the idea is still the same. The basic idea that we're going for is to establish a bigger economy than my opponent has, and we're gonna just simply, you know, start making more units than he is capable of doing. You gotta keep in mind, there's gonna be travel time between the two bases, right? So as long as I keep in mind that there is gonna be travel time, I can use that additional time to squeeze out more workers. So, since I, you know, I'm gonna be in a good spot defensively speaking, I have about a half minute or so extra to make any workers. So what I'm gonna do is just start non-stop worker production here while getting my own Roach Warren as well. So if we look at the worker count right now, I am, I'm getting my Roach Warren, right? But I'm just making workers. I'm just making sure that I get that big economy out. Also starting up some spine crawlers here or there, but I'm just making workers. Now, at some point, I decide it's enough. It's hard to say when that point exactly is. That seems to be coming mostly from practice. But anyways, so my Ling or my drone count is practically done right now. I'm denying one of his Zerking scouts as well, just because I want to and I know I need to. But at this point, if you take a look at income, it is 32 harvesters for me and 28 for my opponent. Now, that may not sound very significant once again, but that is about a, you know, a net... Um, what is it, like 10% or so? A little bit more even than that. Um, that means that every minute that goes by, I'm gonna be able to make 10% more workers. Uh, or 10% more roaches. On top of that, since that travel time is in, you know, the game, and since he is, um, you know, part in the game, obviously, I know for a fact as well that my opponent is gonna be, you know, needing extra time. Whereas my roaches will almost immediately reinforce the fight. And on top of that, I'm adding spine crawlers, sort of just, you know, to rub the salt in, I suppose. And, uh, you know, just just make it a more painful experience for all of us. Um, so, yeah, I do end up denying that scout here. I do know that, you know, this is practically always going to be the case. And the uh, roaches move across the map. At which point, I start making my own roaches. Now, supply-wise, this is really, really disorienting. Um, roaches cost a lot of supply, and they aren't really... Um, supply friendly at all and at this point like you can see economy wise I actually have eight more harvesters than my opponent that is a ton that means that you know he is gonna only be getting about uh, three quarters of my income every single minute that goes by so that means I'm just gonna be able to make uh, basically uh, you know 25% more roaches don't math me don't math me I know that I probably made a calculation mistake here somewhere but <laughs> um, you get the point I'm gonna be able to produce more roaches than my opponent can at this point, just by simply making more workers before starting up my production. And I actually got full saturation on two bases here, off of two gases. At this point, I'm just gonna start making my own units. Now, the one big mistake that I do make here is me not having the queens on the ramp. If I would've had the queens on the ramp, I probably would've been able to hold on much easier. Uh, but that's just something uh, to be learning from here as well. Now, while this is going on, halfway through or so, I've recognized that this is going to be something I can hold. I know that my opponent put a lot of effort into trying to execute this timing, so what am I already doing behind this, and that is one of the things that I would always recommend you do, um, is set up some sort of follow-up. So in this particular case, once I recognize that my opponent did indeed, um, you know, put all of his axe in one basket and he tried to do one big push out, and I'm more than likely going to be able to hold that, I'm following it up with a lair as well as double evolution chamber. And the idea behind that is that I don't actually want to move out yet, but the idea behind that is that I push out when plus one missile as well as plus one armor finish up, as well as the roach speed upgrade. So I'm getting those three upgrades ready to get started right off the get-go. And behind this, after holding the aggression, I plan on going for a third base. So, you always want to be trying to think a step ahead, right? I know Zerk vs Zerk can be a frustrating matchup, and I know it can be a matchup where um, strategy feels much less obvious, I guess the correct word is. But if, you know, if you think it in a, in a bit more of like a strategic fashion, I'm sure that a lot of you will be able to enjoy this matchup as well. Just because um, the Zerk and Bailing aggression is holding you back doesn't mean that you, you know, are gonna have a terrible matchup left over. So I'm gonna be going for the third base. My opponent says nice scout and well reading. I guess he means well read. All is good though. And I hope this game at least taught you a little bit more 
about playing a safe Zerk vs. Zerk. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this game. If you haven't already, hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, all right? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!